Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy XIV Let's Play Part Series thingy. Weird intro. I don't know why I keep doing that. Alright, uh, next episode I'm not doing that anymore. Now it just feels stupid. But anyway, uh, I've been speeding through the main story since Magamog Mag Hard Mode. I kind of got in the flow of it, so I decided I might as well keep going. It's starting to get late for me. It's been a long day, but one last recording for this day, and we are going to be doing the War Leader Hard Mode. Now, I usually call it the... Never mind. I'm pronouncing it differently uh, than how I normally pronounce it on purpose because of reasons. But anyway, this is Leviathan Hard Mode, and it's a very easy fight. Now, unlike Mago Mog, I made mention of this in the last video, you do not get loot from this. You can get a housing item, Leviathan's Barb, you can get Leviathan's card for Triple Triad, but there's no weapons. You, from this point on, it's pretty much extreme modes of weapons in terms of primals, and that's it. Average item level to enter is 60. <laughs> we are well above that, so let's queue right in and see uh, how long it takes. I should probably check the windows to see if he's worth a bonus right now. I've made mention of it before, but people farming their Zodiac weapons, when at certain primals are, uh, are fights that you'll farm, depending on which one is in season, I guess I'll say, uh, there's a whole thread and everything saying, hey, for the next two hours, this primal will get you the most progress on your Zodiac weapon. And, um... The average wait time is usually less than five minutes for most primals, but if it's the one that everyone's farming in this specific window, then, oh, well, it just might be because we got our queue pretty quick. Leviathan is actually pretty common farm anyway, just because he's pretty easy. Uh, Garuda is the most popular farm, but uh, Leviathan's not bad. So, oh, <laughs> just when I thought we had shaken that curse, oh, I give it another 10 seconds and we'll probably have a queue. Okay, three seconds then. Never mind. Of course, this still requires everyone to press the accept button, which is not guaranteed. So Leviathan hard mode, kind of like Mago Mog, is pretty easy fight, multi-target fight, lots of different ads that you can kill, but not too bad, especially as a healer. Uh, extreme mode's a much different beast for a healer. That's a very unique mechanics that you're probably not used to at this point. And by unique mechanics, I mean a singular mechanic. Also, very long story cutscene here. So I just moved my microphone. Hopefully that didn't affect the recording at all. I was moving it a little bit farther away from my headset. And I'm worth the first time bonus, so <laughs> I already know everyone's happy to see me. Also, some of my favorite music comes from this fight. Not, not this... I mean, I'm okay with this first part, but... It's the second part, really, that I, uh, that I like. You'll see what I mean. It's got kind of the Titan effect where it changes halfway through. It seems like me and this white mage are just trying to go fast. <laughs> oh, man. Hello. Somebody apologize for watching. I think what he's saying is... He has a long loading time because I, I don't understand why he would apologize. He says, sorry, if I am watching it, if I mean, maybe it's his first time in here. That's a lot of health to have before coming to Leviathan. I guess I can't be too surprised. I've seen it happen multiple times up to this point, but I mean, I'm the first time bonus here, so it should be pretty decent. We're going to be waiting here for a while. I'll be back when they're done viewing cutscene. Hey, we're back. Time to buff us up, and we'll be ready to go. Oh, I knew that guy was not going to wait. <laughs> Damn it, I wanted to get that off. Eh, not a big deal. I'll just give him uh, a stone skin. So for the first 10% of the fight, Leviathan's just going to auto-attack the main tank. And that's that's it. I'm not kidding. This is the first 10% of the fight. It's the one fight where I feel like they really gave you the biggest freebie right at the start. But right after that, he's going to start doing stuff. So don't worry, stuff starts happening. He's going to go underwater, and he's going to spawn on one of the four corners. So he spawns there. He's going to body slam. Mmm. Like this. Mmm. Body slam strikes us all. Now, if you're under him when he has that, it will do damage to you. So don't get hit by it. So at this point, he has a head and a tail. Now, magic damage dealers should be on the head, and physical, that includes bards, should be on the tail. The main reason is that the tail reflects magic damage and the head reflects physical damage. Now, of course, the main tank doesn't have to worry about that. I think it specifically says it's ranged damage. Let's see. Yeah, ranged attacks. So, I mean, physical don't go to the head because of its AoE attacks. And also, the tail is considered its rear and its flank. So, technically, like, 
I guess, well, the tail was right there. This would be, let me just make sure I'm not getting slammed on. And I am. <laughs> let me let me use the actual tail that's spawning as a means of showing. So the main tank just grabs the head, does whatever. Off tank, okay, so see how it's got the circle? So this is the rear, and this is Leviathan's flank. His head has a flank in the front, but I mean, if you want to do your rear attacks, that's where it matters most, is being on the tail. And if you're a bard and you hit the head, it will do reflected damage back at you, and it hurts a lot. So don't do that. And that AoE, amongst others, are the reasons why you don't... Um, you don't have physical on the head bards can double dip on the dots but it's not mandatory so don't worry just kill the ads off they do a little bit of damage they can start putting status effects on people if you're not careful whenever he leaves the boat just be prepared he's got some aoe damage right here and at 60 percent, he's going to go into his next phase we're probably going to get one more jump phase right here yeah we did but we still got these so now we have four gyre spumes think of these like the mm, think of those like if it's nails just kill them off when they explode they're going to do aoe damage though now the one thing that is significantly different about this fight is he has those you saw him dash across the arena so basically at certain points of the fight when he leaves to do his body slam he's also going to do a dash and the way to determine where his dash will come from on hard mode is really simple see how he's on the south side of the boat looking at my mini map that means he'll either charge from this angle look facing directly at me or this angle so what you do is just stand right here when you see the water pillar you may take a quick step left or a quick step right and you're good to go do you have aggro oh no he's reflecting damage back at himself i think he was double dipping on the dots yeah he was double dipping on the dots it's okay i didn't know he was doing it um but it's perfectly okay to speed the fight up to do that he didn't do wrong i do it on my bard all the time for this fight so it's perfectly acceptable your healers just need to be prepared for set event so we'll probably get one more thing. So we had the whole reason we had to kill those gyre spumes. You see the elemental conversion, by the way, these are the dives. See, just he's on the south side of the boat. Just look towards the south side of the boat and dodge. It's a lot different on extreme. And then just get to the middle of the boat. That's all that matters on hard mode. Um, so the whole reason you kill those gyre spumes is you see the elemental conversion rate on the right. You need to think, I think it's like a minimum of 30 or something like that. It needs to be like green in order to guarantee you'll survive his ultimate attack and then you need to hit this elemental converter when he goes underwater now that timing can be a little bit off i think he killed himself with the uh reflect mechanic i wasn't paying attention to that guy at all i'm busy trying to explain mechanics here guys you can see there's very very little healing so i'm just gonna oh here's the music mm, 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 mm. all right sorry i'm ruining it for you so yeah, that's the entire first half of the fight. There's going to be a new type of ad here. He's going to still do the body slams, the dashes. Nothing nothing too crazy. Don't worry. Yeah, he is still hitting the head. I see. I don't know if he just doesn't know or if he's double dipping. Because I was... I remember... Oh. I think he... I don't think he knows. I don't think he realizes that he's supposed... Because he, yeah, he's just full time on the head. He should be on the, uh, on the tail at this point. That's just because he's uninformed. I think he was one of the people that said they were a first timer. I mean, like I said, it's okay to, to put some dots on it, but the full-time need to heal somebody is a little bit extra work. So this Wave Tooth Sahagin is an add. This is probably the most dangerous add in the whole fight. You usually want your off tank to stun lock this thing, starting at around 60% of its HP and kill it. If you do not, it can lay down circles on the ground that cause hysteria, which just makes you run around aimlessly. It can, uh, it can also just cast an, a raid-wide version of that same attack. And as soon as you kill that, the fight's pretty much over. He's going to get one more body slam uh, off here, it looks like. And also, later in the fight, when he starts body slamming. He can summon these bubbles that'll land on people, do some AOE damage. But as you can see, it's not that bad. I'm just, I'm not, <laughs> I hate to say it, but, oh, he's already got a res on him. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to say, I'm not going to res that guy. I guess, yeah, just, I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, he immediately went for the head again and died. So, yeah, I'm just going to let it be. We'll just finish the fight. No biggie. So, of course, the fight, the pattern just repeats. I'm pretty sure even hard mode has an enrage timer at some point. But you can see, it's like, it's not a fight you really need a guide for. That's why I've never made a guide for Leviathan Heart. It's why I stopped making guides for the hard modes altogether. Because you just don't need, they're, they're story-based fights. Like, they're not difficult. They might be a little confusing to a brand new player because they're not exactly sure what's going on. But even if everybody has no idea what they're doing, you should beat it in a couple of tries. That's the honest truth about these kind of fights. So that was a really, really short one. Only a 10-minute video. Mm, trying to debate. 
I should record another one, because I still have a ton of dungeons. Lost City of Amdapur is coming up next on the list. Oh, I can't wait for that dungeon. I love that dungeon. But it's been a long, long day. I've been up since 5 a.m. That's what, 17 hours ago? I'm usually the kind of person who does very, very poorly with little sleep. So I think at this point, I am going to call it a night. I'm going to be blazing through the story in some of these next parts. I got plenty of dungeon runs to do and things like that. Still on the gearing up process, but the main story with all the first time bonuses for the primals is really, really good. I'm debating saving up that 1300 soldiery for a weapon. Get, a, get an unidentified Allegan Tomestone. Because I'll be getting a Poetics weapon in a couple of weeks on this character. I'm probably going to get my item level up, then start doing Amdapur Keep. Work my way through the story, get my expert roulette unlocked, um, make my way towards an item level 120 weapon, and I could jump right from 90 to 120. The 100 and 110 weapon, not too big a deal. Grabbing the 100 weapon would be great, but I'm going to need to do Circus Tower or Second Coil in order to get that, and mm, I like my odds. I like my odds better just going straight for the 120 where I can guarantee the drop. But anyway, uh, that's going to be it for me. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I'm sorry it was a short one, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then... Take care.